Welcome to Emergency Insights. I'm your host, James Carter. Today, we're dissecting a procedure that's fundamental to emergency medicine, rapid sequence intubation, or RSI. While RSI is a life-saving tool for achieving rapid airway control in unstable patients, it's also a procedure fraught with potential pitfalls, especially when performed under pressure. Let's begin by emphasizing that despite its standardized steps, preoxygenation, sedation, paralysis, and intubation, RSI remains highly error-prone. The primary culprit? Inadequate preparation. It's not just about having the equipment, but ensuring every piece is checked, functional, and that robust backup plans are in place. Think about that difficult airway scenario before you even begin. Another common pitfall we see is poor patient positioning. This is particularly critical in our obese or critically ill patients where glottic visualization can be severely hindered. Remember, a ramped or head elevated position isn't a suggestion, it's a strategic maneuver proven to significantly improve your success rates. Don't rush this crucial step. Moving to pre-oxygenation, this is an area where corners are often cut. A hurried or poorly performed pre-oxygenation directly reduces a patient's apnea tolerance. We're talking about a full 3 to 5 minutes with 100% oxygen, and where appropriate, consider apneic oxygenation to maximize that safety window. Next up, drug errors are a significant and often catastrophic pitfall. Incorrect dosing or the use of contraindicated agents, such as succinylcholine in a patient with hyperkalemia, can lead to severe, even fatal complications. Always double-check your medications, doses, and patient contraindications. Once you're at the laryngoscopy stage, extended attempts are your enemy. Prolonged laryngoscopy attempts directly contribute to hypoxia and airway trauma. Each attempt should be under 30 seconds. And critically, don't hesitate to use video laryngoscopy early and call for experienced assistance if needed. Your patient's oxygen saturation is a finite resource. And after tube placement, the job isn't done. Relying solely on auscultation for confirmation of tube placement is inadequate and potentially dangerous. Waveform capnography is the undisputed gold standard for verification and should be your primary method. Finally, let's talk about post-intubation care. This is frequently overlooked and delays in sedation or suboptimal ventilator management can rapidly destabilize your patient. Constant reassessment is paramount and clinicians must proactively anticipate complications such as hypotension or pneumothorax. Beyond the technical aspects, human factors like poor communication and cognitive overload amplify these risks. This is where structured roles, rigorous simulation training, and disciplined closed-loop communication significantly enhance team performance and patient safety. RSI, when executed with vigilance, meticulous planning, and precision, is undeniably life-saving. However, it's only by recognizing and diligently avoiding these common mistakes that we can truly ensure patient safety and procedural success. Thank you for joining me on Emergency Insights. Stay vigilant, stay prepared. I'm James Carter, and we'll see you next time.